Hi folks, this is Don Meisner with the North Country Fishing Report. I was talking to my nephew who had moved from Alabama a year or so ago to an area near Cleveland. Now, I went to college out in Ohio near Cleveland, so I'm, I'm aware of that area. But my nephew Kenny grew up in this area, and I used to take him fishing all the time when he was a kid. And even when he got out of the Marines, we did a TV show one day on the Deer River over by North Lawrence. And that that was an incredible show, and it's a it's a memory and it's experience I'll share with you sometime because on that day I learned an awful lot. But anyway, we were talking because it was Christmas time, and 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 Kenny said, "Don, I don't know if you realize it or not." He said, "But people out here are fishing right now in Lake Erie because again our warm weather hadn't frozen, and they were going out and they're fishing walleye." But what he told me about the walleye fishing is something that I wanted to pass on to you because it doesn't matter where you are, where, wherever we are. Walleyes are, have a unique habit that is part of their, their lifestyle that I think it's important for us to realize. Walleyes migrate and can migrate great distances. And they do it on a yearly or monthly or whatever you want to say cycle. And... Kenny said, Don, he says, I don't think you realize, but there's three basic areas here in Lake Erie where people fish for walleyes. And there's huge, fabulous walleye fishing in Lake Erie. But he says, there's the western basin, there's a central basin, and then the the far eastern basin, which is going back towards Buffalo or back towards Erie, Pennsylvania. And he said, depending on the time of the year, that's where the walleye fishing will be concentrated, and they'll follow this migration of these walleyes. Well, I thought about when we first discovered in Lake Ontario, down by Hay Babe, the Bay of Quinte, down in that part on the Canadian side, and people started to discover these huge walleyes that were part of this this water system. But they came to learn that these walleyes migrated huge distances during the year. They would go all the way up to the St. Lawrence River and when I say up, I'm talking about uh, north to south, not necessarily water flow. And they would they they have their routes. And when we've talked about the walleye fishing around us in the St. Lawrence River, where it's at certain times of the year, maybe the walleye fishing around Messina is better than, let's say, Ogdensburg. And yet then you'll have times when, boy, the right around where the Oswegatchie River comes in and that whole region near Ogdensburg, the, wa- the, the fish have moved. And also, they move from one side of the river to the other. So at some po- times of the year, the, the fishing on the Canadian side is superior to on the U.S. side. But the real point that I want to, to sort of discuss is the fact that walleyes are always on the move. I've told you about a place between Waddington and Messina along the shoreline, where in the fall, in the late fall, every year those walleyes are come back to this very same sort of hole, I would say, in the water, where the water drops down to about 30 feet, and I'm able to cast from shore and catch these fish. They're not there in the spring. At least they don't appear to be. They have gone someplace else, but they have a route that they follow. Now, years ago, I got information from our DEC and from fishermen down in the Shemung River. And then, of course, that that water flows into the Susquehanna, which go, flows all the way down or up, but it goes all the way. They, they trace these fish. They, in other words, they had tagged some of these walleyes to study their migrational route, and they found the same fish, that were, that were in the Shemung River all the way down at a later time of the year in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. That's, that's over 100 miles. So it shows the tremendous difference distance that walleyes will travel. And I think it's really important as walleye fishermen that we understand this. A lot of times in our, and I talk about the tributaries that we fish here, the St. Regis River, the Grass River, the any of these rivers where there's walleyes in our inland waters, whether they have a migration route or not, I'm not sure. I know that there is certain holes in these rivers. So I, I call them holes. Certain spots of structure that they were attracted to. Usually, it's it's any kind of brush pile, any kind of of 
change of, of, of structure that gives them a place to congregate. They do all the time. They hang around, just like crappies will hang around any brush that's in the water. That's why a lot of times people take a Christmas tree or something and, and take it and let it go down through the ice when the ice melts. And that becomes a spot where they know crappies will come to, other fish will. Well, walleyes are really famous for that as well. My walleye experience and the great walleye fishing that I've had has been primarily in our tributaries. So the habits of the walleyes there are a little bit different, and they do tend to stay in the same areas. They may roam up and down looking for food and so forth, but they will stay around that structure. But in bigger bodies of water, walleyes really do follow a migration route. And I think it's important if you're going to concentrate on these waters that you learn that route because it can help you to be able to follow them and catch more fish more of the time. Until next time, folks, this is Don Meisner with the North Country Fishing Report.